and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'll be talking a little bit about the documentary Chasing Coral. This documentary I absolutely loved. It's definitely one of my favorite documentaries I've watched. Uh, I really like this one just because it's super powerful, um, yet it's it has, it has beautiful pictures, beautiful imagery, and it's just a really well done uh, video and it's just empowering and honestly when i watched this documentary the first time i cried actually every time after that for i watched this documentary about three times and i've cried every single time i've watched it the uh the scientists uh go out and they and they take pictures uh underwater of these corals and they show that the corals are bleaching and they show that the corals are dying and in these mass bleachings are happening because the water is getting warmer and the water is getting warmer because of climate change because what we are doing to our climate that's why these corals are dying the documentary that i watched chasing coral it says without the oceans we are in danger the oceans control everything. They control weather. They control climate. They control the oxygen we breathe. If we don't have a healthy ocean, we don't have a healthy planet. That was a key point in this documentary. So we need to work together to help the oceans and to make it so they can thrive so that we can thrive as well. In the last 30 years, small time frame, 50% of our coral is gone, is, has died. So what will happen in the next 30 years? Will all the coral be gone? If we don't make a change in our climate, if we don't make those changes in our everyday life, if we don't make changes in the policy level, we may lose all of our coral in the next 30 years. And I know I'm still going to be living in the next 30. Well, I hope I'm going to be living in the next 30 years. And I'll be 50 by the time our, all of our coral is gone. We may have a major food problem. We are going to have a biodiversity problem. We're going to have a mass extinction problem. And this just goes to show that climate change is real and it's happening right now as we speak. This is ha not just happening in certain places. This is happening worldwide. In oceans worldwide, coral is bleaching and it's dying. So the scientists were curious about why this is happening. They're like, why is the coral bleaching? They put coral into a water and they raise the water temperature 2 degrees Celsius. At 2 degrees, that is when the coral starts to bleach. This has only been happening in recent years from our, from our emissions of CO2 in the atmosphere. So it's only been happening since we have been on this planet and it's only the the coral bleaching is happening because of the co2 in the atmosphere and because the co2 is causing our atmosphere to warm and it's causing the average temperature of the water to warm as well the temperatures are not going to fall down unless we do something about it so 25 percent of marine life rely on coral reefs a half a billion to a billion people rely on coral reefs as their major food source. So not only are we harming our wildlife, but we are taking away this food source. We had cures for cancer in the sea and from the coral. And so without coral, we may lose on a very valuable resource. Also, coral reefs provide as a break zone for cyclones and large waves. So without the coral reefs, we may lose part of our homes on the coast because we don't have any protection anymore that the coral reefs provided us. 93% of that heat trapped into the atmosphere is going into our oceans. Now, there's a small wonder why there's harmful effects that are happening in the oceans because of this massive amount of heat in the recent years. Researchers went out to New Caledonia and Lizard Beach in the Great Barrier Reef and they went out every day to document these corals. In New Caledonia they noticed something pretty bizarre that was happening. The corals were, were turning this vibrant bright neon color. So this is a phase of death. They stated this one thing in the documentary, that they feel as if um, this is the coral's way of saying, 
hey, notice me, I'm dying over here, and we're not paying any attention to that. And luckily these scientists are going out there and researching this, and luckily we have people who are trying and who are making an effort, and I, I feel that if we all can make an effort, we can make even that much more of a difference. In about 25 years, the coral, you know, the temperature in the water will become too warm for the corals to be able to survive. And that's in the next 25 to 30 years. And in the year's future, we will see entire species go extinct because of this. And it only takes a small amount of warming in the oceans for our corals to be affected by it. In 2016 alone, 29% of the Great Barrier Reef died. It's it's estimated that 67% of corals in the northern region uh, died after this 2016 Great Barrier Reef coral bleaching event. In African Samoa and South Pacific, in the South Pacific Ocean, the coral is bleaching as far as the eye can see it. It's just white. Uh, in Hawaii, uh, in one summer, they lost 25 to 50% of their coral. Uh, that was in 2014. In Bali, one half of their coral has already died. In the Florida Keys, they lost 80 to 90 percent of corals. This is a worldwide epidemic and it's happening all over and it's going to continue to happen the warmer our oceans get. And right now our oceans are not getting any colder. And if we don't address this problem and act on this problem, we will lose an ecosystem and millions of people will suffer because of it. But to look at a more positive outcome, because there's always a positive, don't think that, you know, you're just one person, what can you do? Because there is so much just you can do. There and not only can you do something, but you can encourage other people to do something as well. You can encourage conversation. You can educate others about this issue. We can reduce the amount of CO2 and greenhouse gases we emit in our own home, in the choices we make, in the food we choose to eat. And right now, it is not too late to make a change. I really do encourage you all to go to chasingcoral.com and learn about ways that you can make a difference and that you can help this cause. So I actually went to the website and they had multiple ways that you can make a difference within your own community. Something that they had on their website is to host a screening. So it could be at your school, it could be at an elementary school, it could be at a middle school, high school, it could be at your college just a good way to get the community involved and to get people knowing about this issue. Another way that they said is just to get the word out there on social media. I definitely recommend using Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, whatever you're into, uh, YouTube, and share with others. Get the word out there. They also have this action guide on their website and you can download it and it has ways that you can help. A big huge one is pledge to vote. If you really want to make a change higher up in politics, register to vote and vote. And as the website said that there are 15 million registered U.S. voters that care about the environment but didn't turn out to vote. We need to change this. If we want to make a difference, we need to vote on politicians, on policies that encourage environmental change. So if your community is not using clean energy, if they're using energy from coal or natural gas or oil, uh, then you know, reach out to your governor or state representative and bring to their attention, hey, we want to change to renewable energy. Find ways, research ways that you can reduce your own carbon footprint individually. I have this link to National Geographic 14 Ways to Reduce Your Carbon Emissions. Uh, they have that link on the website. Definitely recommend clicking on that. Join local efforts. There are groups out there that are doing good, that are helping this cause. There's the 350 organization. There's the Citizens Climate Lobby. There's also Environmental Defense Fund, Environment America. There's also the Nature Conservancy and the National Wildlife Federation. There are so many other, and there's so many others that you can join as well. Uh, local groups, local chapters that are making a difference. Also, support the Coral Crew. Um, is one of the things that they have on their website. You can donate either with m your money or your time. Issue a statement that says to not you know, build 
more coal power plants near these fragile reefs. The documentary was showing at the very end a bunch of countries reporting on corals dying, and so we know that this is a global event. This is called the 50 Reefs Initiative. Uh, so if you are anywhere near a coral reef uh, and you would like to get involved in this uh, reef initiative, uh, go onto the website and it has a place where you can get involved in that and you can report what you are noticing in your local reefs. The last thing is to choose safe sunscreen for the coral. Please check out the article, Seven Sunscreens That You Can Wear This Summer That Won't Harm Coral Reefs. It lists explicitly the sunscreens that you can buy, and they say where you can buy it from and how much it costs. It just lays it out all for you. Chemical shown to damage coral, coral reefs is oxybenzone. So make sure you're getting sunscreen that does not contain oxybenzone because that does damage our coral reefs. The article also said that on May 1st of this year, actually Hawaii um, banned sunscreens that harm the ecosystem. So this is already a step in the right direction. We just all need to get on board uh, with this cause. So please check out the link below. Uh, this is for the Chasing Coral uh, website and I also put the link for the seven sunscreens you can wear this summer that won't affect coral reefs. I really hope you all enjoyed this video and definitely watch the documentary. It's on Netflix. Uh, it's called Chasing Coral. Again, please check out the links below and I will see you next time.